make some noise for Will Krolowitz. Hello, Sarasota. How you guys doing? My name is William. I like the name William. I met a guy recently. I introduced myself. He said, nice to meet you, Bill. I said, actually, I prefer William or Will. And he paused for a minute. He goes, well, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and call you Bill. <laughs> Well, I'm going to go ahead and call you Richard, because you're kind of being a dick. Yeah. <laughs> it's William. Ladies, it's Will. Yum. <laughs> That's right, ladies. Just got the new glasses. <laughs> These thick-ass lenses make my brown eyes pop. Hashtag glaucoma. Not glaucoma. I've been wearing glasses since I'm eight years old, and when I found out I had to wear glasses, my mother got mad at me. I would get blamed for all my afflictions. It's like, he has to wear glasses. That's because you sit too close to the television. He needs braces. I told you not to chew like that. He has asthma. Oh, he's just too lazy to breathe. No, it's because you smoked all through the pregnancy. <laughs> Don't blame her. Back in those days, four out of five doctors recommended smoking to expected mothers to calm their nerves. Don't upset the baby. Relax. Have a glass of wine. So I was born with asthma and a hangover. Welcome to the world. So I'm heavy, I have asthma, and I caught COVID back in 2020. It was not good. I ended up in the hospital. It was bad. They hooked me up to a lot of monitors. And one night they came in with the crash cart. They had the paddles out clear, scared the shit out of me. And the doctor's like, we thought we were going to lose you. Your oxygen levels dropped to dangerous levels. If you don't get this CPAP machine with oxygen, there's a very good chance you could have a heart attack or a stroke and die in your sleep. And I was like, oh my god, die in my sleep? That is awesome. <laughs> Who doesn't want to die in their sleep? How did you die? I don't know. I slept right through that shit. <laughs> First he went to bed, then he woke up dead. He went peaceful. Yes. So I'm getting ready to get out of the hospital. The doctor comes in, they did an MRI in my chest, and the doctor said, we noticed on the MRI that you have arthritis in your spine. And I was like, from the COVID? He goes, no, sometimes. The parents will pass it down. Did either one of your parents have arthritis? I'm like, yeah, my mom's got arthritis, but she has it in her hand. But she used to always hit me in my spine. <laughs> that must be how she passed it down to me. <laughs> That's not how that works. <laughs> so a year and a half, I didn't get a chance to see my grandchildren. My youngest granddaughter was two years old the last time she saw me. A year and a half later, she forgot me. When I saw her, she's like, what's your name? I said, I'm Grampy, sweetie. She said, who's your daddy? <laughs> I said, I'm your daddy's daddy. And not only that, you're named after me. Your name is Willa. My name is Will. And she scowled at me and she said, you just said your name was Grampy. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Now I'm involved in a circular argument with a three-year-old and she's fucking winning. <laughs> so I said, no, Grampy's my title. See, I'm Grampy to you, I'm dad to your dad, and I'm Will to everybody else. She said, that doesn't sound real. I said, I'll tell you what's not real, Santa Claus, and I ran away. <laughs> Come on, it's a joke, I can't run, I have arthritis in my spine. <laughs> So I went back to work, I have no sense of smell. I, and I know that because I have a stinky coworker that I have avoided for years. <laughs> and I went back and I couldn't smell her. And I discovered something about her. She is delightful. <laughs> oh my God, all these years I've been avoiding one of my favorite people on the planet. So I guess for me, COVID has been a little bit of a blessing. So <laughs> thanks, China. <laughs> Thank you for COVID. I was gone in the hospital and I was out for a while. I go back to work and they have moved my desk. I said, I've been at that desk for almost 30 years. Don't I get any consideration? 
I wish someone would have sat down and talked to me about it before you made that decision, but, you know, to move my desk. I, I feel like a pawn. It's like, come on, you're not a pawn. You're a knight, because we move you two up and one over. <laughs> chess people. <laughs> so I'm back at work. I'm in the restroom. Someone is talking on their cell phone in the next stall. It's infuriating. Finally, I had to say something. I'm like, hey, if I have to sit here and listen to your dumb conversation, how the hell am I supposed to come? <laughs> It's almost over. I'm trying to concentrate. Can you please shut the hell up or say something sexy? To which they replied, will you please leave the ladies' room? Come on. Come on. It's a joke. I can't jerk at work. I have arthritis in my spine. You guys have heard. So I have two grown sons. My oldest son looks like his mother. My youngest son looks like me. My oldest son thinks that my other son is my favorite because he looks like me. I'm like, that's ridiculous. He's not my favorite because he looks like me. He's my favorite because he doesn't look like my ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> I met my ex-wife when we were both in the Army stationed in Georgia, right at Fort Stewart. And uh, yeah, and uh, we eloped without meeting each other's families, which I think was a big mistake because uh, I did not realize I had married into a Sicilian family from New Jersey. I was shocked. My ex-wife's maiden name was Williams. What the hell kind of Sicilian family has the last name of Williams? The kind that's in the witness protection program. So not only are they mobsters, but they're all a bunch of freaking rats. My ex-wife, Victoria, and her brother, Sal and Tony Williams. Sal was mad. He was, look, I'm gonna tell you, he was mad because we didn't get married in church. These people might be cold-blooded killers, but they're really good Catholics. <laughs> and he says, so in the eyes of God, my sister's a whore? I'm like, whoa, 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 man. Your sister is not a whore. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get there. I said, how did you meet my sister? That's an interesting story. I met your sister when we were in the army. Your sister was in my unit. Next thing I know, my unit was in your sister. That's right. <laughs> my unit, your sister. So we had a couple of sons. She was getting out of the army. We decided to go our separate ways. It wasn't a good match. And I was going to Europe. And I said, come on, just let me take the kids to Europe with me. And she did. She allowed me to take them. And then she got remarried and had a couple more kids. We got divorced again. <laughs> I took the kids to Europe, I came back, got out of the army, I'm from New Orleans originally, I moved back to New Orleans and I met a Wisconsin girl down there. And she said, let's go to Wisconsin, they'll get a good education. And I said, okay. So we moved to Wisconsin 30 years ago. And uh, we broke up after one year. <laughs> Too much fighting, I don't like to fight, I don't like to argue, especially in public. We're in the mall and she's like, here, hold my purse. I'm not gonna carry your purse. Like, well, you're not man enough to carry a purse? Like, that's a black bag and I'm wearing brown shoes. I look like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so I stayed in Wisconsin. I raised my sons in Wisconsin. They got good educations, they got good jobs. When they were in college, they took me out for Father's Day. We're enjoying a nice Father's Day meal. Couple comes in with a five or six year old kid. They sit down at the table next to us. Kid starts banging on the table. Parents say nothing. Kid gets up on the table, starts running around the restaurant. The parents ignore it. One of my sons turns to me and goes, Dad, I want to thank you for not allowing us to behave like that. And when I have kids, I'm not going to let them behave like that either. I hope I can be as good a father of my kids as you were to me. I was touched. I thought I was going to get emotional. So I reached out and I gave him a little smack in the head. I said, get your elbows off the damn table. <laughs> and then I stuck my foot out and I tripped that little bastard as he ran by. Because it takes a village. Thank you guys, you've been great.